Joining us now is a man who I think has given numerous motivational speeches. Ooh. I mean, you're talking about got two times Super Bowl champion. What? What? The Kryptonite's Bill Belichick. What? what? New York Giant legend. Jersey retired. What? Now Monday Night Manning host. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the Manning Omaha production family stud stallion, Eli Manning. Yeah! Eli! What's up, dude? What's up, fellas? How are we doing? Thanks hey. for having me on. No, thank you for joining us. I'm a big fan. Uh, I've gotten a chance to meet you one time, but always watch on from afar. You're the best, dude. How's life as a retired man? Uh, you know, it was good. I was, uh, I was like fully retired. I was playing golf every day. I was enjoying it. And then Peyton convinced me to go back to work. And now I'm, I'm grinding, watching film again, you know, game planning for Monday night football and, and, uh, you know, doing a little college football show, uh, you know, filming for that. So uh, all of a sudden I'm, I'm like busy again. I kind of got to re-retire, I think. Is Peyton the boss outright? Yeah, over there. I mean, you, 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 you've been with him before. You know how he rolls. I mean, he, he he was like the head coach. He's, he, he wants everything done exactly how he wants it done. And uh, you know what? I'm, 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 you know, growing up with him, I'm so used to it. And, uh, you know, I just kind of, you just got to keep him on his toes. You got to like, sit, every once in a while, like I'll send them like the worst idea. Like just like, <laughs> hey, hey, hey guys, how about like we don't wear shirts this Monday at the beginning of it just to like see how it goes. Just to like. He's like, what? That's a terrible idea. I'm like, I know. You just got to, like, calm down. Like, settle down a little bit. <laughs> like, we'll be fine. All right, let's try to enjoy this just somewhat. And I think you guys came out of the gates, and you came out hot. Like, your first uh, game you guys did, I think, was a very positive uh, response from everybody. I thought it was awesome. What, I guess from what you were expecting, how did it all play out? Yeah, uh, you know, we thought it played out well. And, um, you know, we just kind of didn't know. Like, we did a few – rehearsals and we had a you know but we just kind of did like an hour of a game from last year where we didn't really know like what the situation was even in that you know, like recall like hey this is week seven last year like what was going on like what was the record of these teams you didn't know what was going on and so we just wanted to make sure we had enough like material like hey do we need to add some things do we need to have some plays called do we need to draw up plays like what what's good what's bad and i think uh you know we're still kind of learning that each week We'll try different things and, and kind of feed off the audience of whether, hey, this, hey, we really like that or like that was that was too much. I think Peyton did, did like seven shots of Red Bull right right at the beginning, <laughs> so he was he was a little fired up uh, to start the game. You know, he was telling me like before kickoff, he's like, hey, I haven't like been in a situation where I'm like nervous in like five years since I retired. All of a sudden, like he's like, I got like the pregame jitters going on. Uh, I'm like, that's good. Like, you need that. You'll be fine. You know, uh, I think Charles Barkley coming on kind of calmed him down. And, and then you forget, like, we have the, we have the football game. Like, you know, so, so, something's going to happen during the game that's going to trigger a story, that's going to trigger something to happen to us. Like, you, you ha that's the material. And let's just go from there and, and we'll be able, you know, we'll, we'll come up with good stories as, as we can't script a good story because you don't know what's going to happen during the game. I think my favorite part was watching, it was like Peyton was in the game. By the way, it was like it was as if he was he was getting upset at some of the play calls, some of the decisions that were being made. But it was it was like drinking football knowledge, though, out of a fire hose. And it was I think as people that enjoy the game and love football, it was a beautiful broadcast. I mean, there early you guys were trying some shit. I think you just talked about it and it didn't really didn't really work out. But I loved it. I absolutely enjoyed it. And I'm very thankful. Did you guys pitch this idea to ESPN or did ESPN come to you guys for this? Because whoever idea this was i would like to personally thank it's massive for the entire sports media as a whole yeah you know i think it's a combination of uh you know peyton's been you know kind of thinking about getting into the broadcasting world for a while he's been approached he's had meetings about it and and then you know i think one of the things is just the travel like all of a sudden for a monday night game you got to leave on friday because you got to be for saturday practice you're doing sunday gone monday back on tuesday and, you know, and we're both like, that's just, that's four days. It's all weekend. It's like a brutal schedule or where, you know, he'd been retired for five years. He's like, I kind of like this freedom. And then, you know, all of a sudden these Zooms are going on and you can start doing things from afar. And it's like, hey, we could team up and, and do this. You know, it sounds like it kind of gives you your football itch, you know, to watch the games, to do it, you know, like how we would watch it on our couch where you you know you analyze it, you bring some guests in, you kind of talk about you know neat things 
that happen that, you know, from our perspective of having played quarterback and being in NFL, things you see where we can explain it to, to fans and, and, you know, some of it might go over their head. We're talking, you know, you know how it is, both of y'all, you know, AJ, and, and, and whether you're talking about punting, like if you explain that to some fans, you know, it, it would yeah. go way over their head. But, you know, they kind of like that. They kind of like knowing, like, you know, that new terminology you say that they have no idea – what they're talking about, but the next day at office, they're like, "Hey, hey listen, you this. see, uh, they're playing two man a lot." Last night. <laughs> they're like, "Hey, you see that zone blitz? They're playing a trap technique." You know, you see that? You know they have no idea what it means, but they, you know you repeat it at, at work the next day. Yeah, I think there was a lot of beautiful things, and but can we? I, I, before we talk about uh, tonight's game and what you may be seeing on film and why Aaron was Aaron last week and what you're expecting out of uh, the Detroit Lions. I think we should make an announcement, Eli. I think we should do it. Uh, all right. Are you? Re- are you? I, I want to know if you'll come on the show tonight. Let's go! Yeah! Yeah! What an yeah! honor! What an absolute. Is that a yes? Yeah, yeah. That seemed like a yes. Yeah, that yeah. Seemed like a yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting here, bated breath. You know, like, hey, maybe I'll get invited on this thing, and I'm so excited. I can't thank you guys, and I'm excited to get in there. I watched. Diligently. We need a punter's perspective. We need a punter's perspective. We need to analyze some of these special teams going on. We don't know what's going on. Me and Leckler were texting each other about <laughs> your guys' lack of respect. Like AJ Cole hit like a 60-yard <laughs> ball, and Peyton's like, all right, fuck it. All right, we'll get on. We've got a break. We'll see. You. I'm like, hey, Peyton, will you please just show a little bit of love for the guy that just murdered the ball? I think Sam Cook had a beauty as well. And Peyton was so mad about the three and out, like about the decisions that were made. He's like, I'm going to go get some water. I'm going to be back on the other yeah. side. The, the only thing that comes up with special teams is if, if there's a penalty. That's the only time we'll, we'll mention a special teams. If there's on a kickoff, if there's a holding or a punt return, there's a holding, and we get and the offense gets backed up. To their own inside their own ten. That's like you know that's that makes us very mad. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's the only time it's brought up. Argument. By the way, yeah, <laughs> is whenever uh, your lives Don't are screw ruined. It up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Don't screw it up. Uh, it's an honor to be on there tonight. I can't wait just to see what happens and what pops up. Let's talk about tonight's game. You said you've been watching some film. What did you see from Aaron? Was there? Have you seen Aaron? Like, did you guys know his game before? Obviously, both in the NFC and he's been around a long time. What did you see out of that first week that against the Saints and maybe makes you think this will be all right tonight? Or what are your thoughts? on how this should go yeah he's gonna be fine and you know i mean he's the you got him you got him every week you you interview him and talk to him and so you know they didn't have the ball a whole lot in the first half you know they had they had 12 12 plays you know going into that two minute drive and they had a great two minute drive uh right there just to get the field goal they only had a minute so it wasn't like they had to settle for a field goal that's all the time they had, you know, even to get a field goal was good. He made a great corner route to Devontae Adams, a great throw there to get a chunk. So, um, you know, he just had, you know, he kind of had the interception uh, on that on the first series of the third quarter. They had a great drive. I saw on your show, uh, you know, he took a he took a shot right to the the Nards there, which is never fun. Um, and and uh, and then you know the next possession, he kind of forced one on a go route but you know at that point you're like you, you got to try to get a play you're getting frustrated you haven't had the ball much your defense has been on the field a ton and you're trying to you know kind of get something going and then next thing you know they're down 24-3 and it's it's late in the third quarter there's not you know not a whole lot to to do so you know he'll be fine he can still sling it he can throw it uh and, you know they'll be better going into that second game and and I expect him to you know be hitting all cylinders by this week hey. Eli, what about the flip side? And you look at the Detroit Lions and, and Dan Campbell. What do you think? Like, what's the their potential? And can you tell even from one game? Do they look different than they have before because of old Motor City Dan? Yeah, I mean, I think he's you know he's obviously fired up and and uh, and has a lot of intensity. So I think that's good. I think when you have a, a team that's you know has hadn't had a ton of success, you got to have a coach that's going to kind of come in and, and change the attitude around that, that team. And, uh, you know, you got, you got to change the culture uh, around that organization a little bit. And, and so I think it's good for them. Um, you know, kind of the same thing. Their, def- their defense is, you know, couldn't, couldn't get off the field much either. It had the, you know, the fumble snap, like on the first play of the game by San Francisco. After that, San Francisco just ran the ball so well. And, uh, you know, I think defensively they like to stay in like a too high and kind of keep everything in front. But San Francisco was just running it. Um, kind of right down their throats a little bit. They had to go single high, and they, they could still continue to run, but then it opened up all their play action, and just, you know, they never could get San Francisco into a third down. It was like first down, second down, first down throughout the whole game. Offensively, 
I think when you have Jared Goff just on a new a new quarterback and a new system, it just takes some time. I've been in that you know scenario before. After being in a system, you know, one system your whole career, you switch it at some point. It just takes a few weeks just to get very comfortable. You, you need these Eli, games what's the hardest to play and to learn from. What's the hardest part of that? Sorry to cut you off of, of learning yeah. that new system. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just some of the terminology and stuff. I, I think, you know, you get to, a, um, you know, something where just visualizing the play. As the play comes in, it's hardest when you, you have like a word. Let's say it was like, hey, twins right was a formation you had in your old system. That meant something. And all of a sudden, this system, they have twins right also. But it's a different formation. So sometimes you're just kind of going back and forth. And, and in the heat, the play in the heat, And right? playing fast. And yeah. just playing fast, making good decisions. You know, seeing everything, and, and uh, it just takes a little time. But he's a smart guy. I think they are letting him put in some of his plays in the system, which is a good idea to get him comfortable and, and get him playing fast. That's like uh, we have a guy here, Zito, whose parents uh, came to America from Cuba. Oh, yeah. His house only spoke Spanish, and then all of his friends spoke English. And he mixed them together so perfectly that nobody could fucking understand what he was saying. <laughs> That's kind of Jared Goff has got to deal with, yeah. you know, two different languages. There is a hypnotist that can get that thing straightened out mm -hmm. like he had to see oh, yeah. as a child. We're talking to Eli Manning, obviously two-time Super Bowl champ and host of Monday Night Manning, which is going to be on ESPN2 tonight at 8.13 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I got tweeted that last week. Uh, I want to talk to you about some of your career and some, you know, football stuff, if that's okay. Eli? Let's do it. Okay, everybody knew Bill Belichick was going to beat the hell out of Zach Wilson yesterday. What what you have obviously had success against him in the grandest stage and everything like that. What is it about Belichick and what is it about some of these coaches that make it so impossible for quarterbacks, especially young ones and offenses as a whole? Yeah, I mean, I think what Belichick does and their defense is that they're, they're extremely multiple and they can be Three, four, they can go four down. They can, you know, play every single coverage in the book. And so I, he likes to get smart players on their defense where they can do so many different things. So as a, you know, quarterback, it's hard because you, you're not just going to get, you know, one look. And, and things they did the week before, they're not going to play any of those coverages. They're going to play, uh, uh, you know, all new stuff. So for a young quarterback, you're just going to get confused. You're going to, you know, get plays you've worked on all week thinking you're going to get these coverages and now you're not. And it's like, hey, well, what's my progression? Where do I go to the ball? And he wants you to force things. He's going to say, hey, you're you're not going to be patient enough. You're not mature enough to take check downs and play smart all game. You're going to want to throw it deep and you're going to want to take shots and we're going to get our interceptions. And, and that's what happened. I watched that game yesterday and, and um, you know, he just tried to force some things and, and you just can't do that in the NFL. You can't get greedy. You can't get – Hey, I'm tired of taking check checkdowns because, uh, or I'm trying to. I'm tired of throwing it underneath. I want to throw it down the field. You know, when it's not there, bad things happen. Uh, my last question before the boys have a couple. We're talking to Eli Manning. Um, are the Giants cursed because of what happened with you at the end of their career? Uh, your career there, where they benched you out of nowhere. <laughs> McAdoo does that yeah. whole situation. Is that a curse? You think that's happening? Or Daniel Jones has his best game by far as a Giant. They still lose. What's going to happen with the Giants organization? You think, Eli? You know, yeah. Last week was a heartbreaker. I mean, you kind of, you know, you're like cheering. You, you know, I'm watching it. I'm jumping up and down. Hey, good win. That was, a, you know, way to rally back. And everybody <laughs> stepped up and played well. And then. You know, they're like, what? Oh, I didn't see anybody jump. I didn't, you know, usually when you think all sides on a field goal, it's like one of the outside guys who's trying to jump the cadence to, to get the block, not a, you know, interior lineman moving when you're just, you know, right in front of the ball. So that was a, you know, that was a, a heartbreaker. So, you know, hopefully they can get back on track. They got Atlanta this week, who's, you know, doesn't seem to, you know, look to be playing real, real well. So, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting, it's my, my Jersey retirement. So I'd like to be there and, and be in good <laughs> cheers and have some cheers at halftime. I mean, that's what it's going down. I'd like to have a lead at halftime. And so, you know, you get some cheers and, and, and don't get anything else. Atlanta feels like the right team to be doing it against. Congrats, by the way. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Speeches in stadiums are always tough. You know, your brother just did one yesterday. I think he just said, hey, thanks a lot. All right. You know, the sound is, uh, the sound is, yeah. 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 They said, I, I asked, I said, how long, how long do I have? They're like, uh, they're like, yeah, you don't have very long. You, you have like a minute. I'm like, I'll do it in 25 seconds or less. Like, this is going to be brief. I, you know, I've seen the halftime speech. Coughlin gave one a few years ago. Um, 
for our uh, Super Bowl 42 10 year anniversary. Like we were still, we were about to like kick off. He is still on the stage. He's like, you said I had five minutes. I'm taking my five minutes. I'm getting everything in. So I will not be long winded. I promise. Four minutes and 25 seconds of that was not understandable because the echo <laughs> yeah. is hitting yeah. the other person. Anyways, go ahead, Ty. Eli, you and Peyton got the chance to watch Lamar Jackson last week. And then after last night, again, he just looks incredible. And I think you guys even mentioned it. Like, you know, it's tough for us to even talk about this because he plays so differently. Is it weird when you look at some of these like younger guys like Lamar and Kyler Murray and, and think like, wow, we, we're playing the same position. And can you like see stuff in your game that they do or not really? There was some, before, before you hit that, there was some stat about quarterback rushing yards this week that was the highest in the history of the game or something. Oh, yeah. 100 yard game. It was like the highest in the history of the game. So it seems like that's the trend. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think, um, you know, the, the fact that Lamar, you know, him, 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 the way he runs the ball, I mean, over 100 yards rushing, he throws the ball. I mean, he, he's got all the tools. And, you know, I think that was the number one, risk is you know the hits but he's so fast he gets out of bounds he does slide like he doesn't take a whole lot of hits um you know he's not you know but he does do a good job i mean they do some of those quarterback runs i mean he's running through the you know in, in between the tackles on some of that stuff and so you just you get you get weary of that all it takes is one you know one weird shot and uh it, it could slow him down so you hope you don't see that but you just see a playmaker and he's, he's exciting to watch I, i'm a I'm like, uh, you know, just just love watching it because it's so different than how I played and some of the stuff I'm trying to learn. Like, is that a read option? Is that a is that a full quarterback run? I'm trying to, you know, just kind of look at some of the decision making he's making uh, and try to, you know, figure it out from a quarterback perspective. So just amazed at his ability and he's he's an exciting player. Eli, is it your uh, your nephew Arch who looks like he's going to become? possibly the greatest football player of all time <laughs> all quarterback. Time. like how's it going like with him and what was his process like did you know at a young age like okay this dude's special you know it's it's fun to watch him and he's got a good attitude towards everything and i feel i feel for him i mean he's got so much pressure so many expectations like you said it's like oh you know people saying hey i hear your you know your nephew's gonna be the best of all of y'all i'm like oh that's no pressure you know <laughs> hey, just went into the hall of fame this year, you, know? <laughs> you know it's not really easy you know it's not hard to become better than than him and and, and have a better career so i think he's just enjoy- i've told him hey enjoy being a high school football player like that is a great time in your life some of the best friends you'll have forever like don't start thinking so much about colleges or, hey, where am I going to go play college and, and thinking about the next levels where you don't get to enjoy this time in your life. And, and so just enjoy it. Work hard at it. Be a great teammate. And, you know, you'll, you'll figure out where you're going to go play college. Like you'll, you'll, you'll make a good decision. You'll know the right spot. And, and, and then you'll enjoy that time as well. But don't, don't miss out on this time in your life because – uh, you know, people want you to make a decision or, 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 or you know, don't put extra pressure on yourself. But uh, he's slinging around. They had a little, you know, New Orleans got delayed a little bit because of the hurricane. So they had the first game last week and, uh, you know, they won and, and he's playing well and, and has a good team. And, uh, you know, he's just like in the last year or two, he's really gotten into football, like in the X's and O's of it. And so that's been fun to talk, you know, talk about defenses, talk about concepts Jeez. of offenses yeah. and, and what works. Yeah, so he's going to be the best of all of you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like he's already diving into the X's and O's. Like what Russell Wilson and Peyton and Eli did in that fourth quarter yeah. of last week's game, Arch is already doing that. No, you're not supposed to throw the ball outside on that particular coverage. Uh-huh. That's what I learned in that fourth quarter there. I texted Cooper, and I, a co-host of College Bowl, by the way, great show. I texted yeah. Cooper, and I was like, what a life Arch is having. He's a junior in high school, and he walks into Georgia in the student section, okay? These co-eds, all right, as a, as a junior in high school. We want Arch painted onto their bodies. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I have no idea how I would handle that if I was – and Coop was like, he has a great attitude about it. I'm like, I don't think there's a better family to be a part of for those types of expectations and conversations. A body paint for a junior in high school, I mean, fucking absurd what he's going to have to go through. I can't wait to see how he navigates those waters. An aggressive move, aggressive move. I did talk to Coop, and uh, and Arch was impressed by that. Was impressed <laughs> by that. You know, so you know he's not worried about the 
NILs. He's not worried about this. He's worried about the body paint on the on the student section. That's what impresses him the most. Hart sounds like a legend already. Yeah. Hey, did you see what they did? They had a <laughs> full cool. body <laughs> paint thing. Oh, that'd be great. What do you have, Ty? What? The oh, lo- no, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. yeah. Uh, Eli, you know, last week you guys were devastated by a fire alarm, and that has actually <laughs> happened uh, in this studio as well. Think- what the hell happened there? Uh, did Cooper just pull it from the back because <laughs> you guys kind of left them out or what? Yeah, I don't know. I, I never got a, a, a formal description of what happened. So last week we were actually, I was actually in studio in New York for last week. From now on, I will be in my basement doing it. So I, I hear the fire alarm. I did not see anybody running for the stairwell, however. I mean, it was like, hey, keep going, keep going. We're good. We're good. And that's all I hear. I'm like, are you sure we're good? Are you sure? Just, you know, is there a fire in the building? I, I, I never heard, but we just kind of kept going. The mic went out one time. I went to the handheld mic. So there's definitely some uh, some issues we're working through. You know, it was our first time, <laughs> first time jitters. But uh, hopefully it'll be a little smoother this week. Oh, my God. You did like a four-minute question. <laughs> and yeah. you, you didn't have the mic. The mic wasn't on. I remember. I was talking. I know. I had like my best story talking about <laughs> And, you know, I, and I was like, I, I'm talking. All of a sudden I hear Peyton, Peyton like talking over me. I'm like, why is he talking over me? I got a good story going here. And my mic was not working. So, but we, we, we're working it out. We're working it out. Hey, that type of stuff is going to happen forever, by the way. Technology is the greatest thing of all time and the worst thing of all time. Watching you guys battle through it actually made us feel like pretty good, actually. So I don't know if you did that on purpose, but we appreciate you lifting all the other spirits out there. Sure. Are you wearing the tank top tonight, uh, Pat? Have you thought about your attire? What are you going? Nah, what you, I saw you guys were kind of like it was like a business cash feel almost, right? You, I think this is business casual for you, right? They True, you've seen that. me in some events. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you're right. That is. Uh, what are you wearing tonight? Are you going to be in your basement? Does that change anything for you or no? Yeah, I mean, uh, I hadn't thought about it. So uh, you, you wear, you know, I think you you got to go something loud. You got to make a statement. You on Saban's fucking boat? Oh man. my god. <laughs> <laughs> You he, might be he the only. He did, he did not go easy on me. He did not go easy. <laughs> hey, that. I mean, I haven't watched the entire episode yet, but somebody on Twitter decided to rip that entire thing, basically, of you and Saban talking, and it's all free on Twitter, obviously. I'm sure ESPN doesn't appreciate that or anything. <laughs> but you talking to Saban, wearing oh, the man. most... <laughs> so you're the only humans. The Mannings are the only humans that could get away with it, and I appreciate the fact that you did that. What was Nick Saban's first reaction whenever you showed up looking like that? Just kind of shaking his head, like, how, how did I, you know, why did I commit to doing this? And so <laughs> I think I got to take advantage, you know, not to bring my nephew back into it, but all these coaches, I'm doing it, you know, this college football, history of college football, all these coaches are saying yes to my, hey, can I come interview you? I need like three hours. Usually they say, hey, you got 30 minutes. I'm like, I think my nephew is on your recruiting list. He's like, all right, you got three hours. <laughs> Totally taking advantage, taking advantage of the situation. Yeah, uh, you deserve it. You guys have earned it. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, Eli, obviously you're retired doing media. Phil's retired coaching. Ben's the only one left still playing from your draft class. He's taken a lot of criticism over the last two years. Do you think that's warranted? How do you feel about uh, what Ben has done the last two years? Yeah, you know, I think he's still Ben can still he can still play. You know, he can still. Uh, extend plays and uh, you know throw it down the field and and knows the offense and and so you know I, I you know I think you always root for your quarterback class and you know always rooted for uh, for Philip always rooted for Ben um, you know you kind of want them to have success like you know, maybe you don't always want them winning like tons of Super Bowls <laughs> every every year like you know but you want them to win games and play well and as a as a collective like group you you want to be kind of considered a great draft class and so i'm 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 you know proud that ben's you know still still slinging it out there and playing and and uh and playing well last question as we go here and we can't thank you enough for your time eli manning um obviously there was a quote i think from peyton about how uh if it wasn't for mama manning okay tom would have two more at this point But now Tom is playing almost his best football yet. He has four consecutive games with at least four touchdowns. Your brother has the record with five consecutive games with at least four touchdowns. So it seems like he's eyeing that for next week. Whenever you and Peyton talk about Tom, and I know Tom had hung out with Peyton in some different situations, and I think their friendship grew a lot more behind the scenes than anybody else knows. So I don't know if you're a part of that as well. But whenever you and Peyton talk about Tom, what is the overall narrative? Like, how the hell is this guy doing this? Or is he an alien? What is the conversation chat about? Yeah, and and 
and, and really, if, if it weren't for my mom, he'd probably have four more because we. I, mean, I was. Oh, I yeah. won two Super Bowls. Peyton knocked him out of two AFC Championship games, so he could have. <laughs> you know, he could have had you know eleven Super Bowls at this point. So it's. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I mean, and I think you know you always could. You know, the last years you could always say, well, it was the system. It was Belichick and everything they were doing, and then all of a sudden, you know, he leaves, goes to a new team, new coach, new coordinators, and a pandemic year and gets the same results and goes to the Super Bowl and wins. And then you see him this year, you know, that he's a a, a second year in this offense. Uh, He has weapons, obviously, on on the offensive side. Their defense is playing great. And and you see what he can produce and just throwing more, you know, more touchdowns. He had, what, five last night and so – or yesterday. So – it's just unbelievable. There, there, there's no words to describe. He just he just keeps somehow getting better, and and arm is still strong, and he moves in the pocket, and and has a um, you know just that willingness to do everything it takes to to go win. So just that competitive edge that he still has, and that drive. It's unbelievable. We have a Giants fan in the office named Bruce. He was wondering why you don't do the sloppy Joe tweets on Sundays anymore. The team needs it. All right, good call, good call. I think next week I might have to. I'm gonna have to do it. I think here it is. You got the New Jersey, the you know Northern New Jersey sloppy Joe's a little different than the rest of the world considers a sloppy Joe. So I might have to bring it back for good luck uh, and get that first win for the Giants this week. You're the man. Can't wait to join you tonight. Can't wait to All watch right, you the rest of the season, right, ladies AJ. and gentlemen. Eli Manning. Yeah. So you're in the Ryder Cup. I'm on Monday Night Manning. Wow. <laughs> we did it, dude. Hey, we did it. Hey, we, we did, did it. We did it. Other side. Right side. Your right side. Yeah. My guy. Nice. 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 Okay. 